Welcome to Seattle's Kingdom, where 52,000 tickets were sold in about 18 hours. Hi, everybody. I'm Chris Berman. So glad you could join us on this a historic afternoon in baseball. One game to decide the American League West. Only the eighth playoff in baseball history, only the third in the American League. Oh, come on now. The 95 season didn't get you that down. I know it began with replacement players. I know it was only 144 games. I know you're still not sold on the wild card race. But if you saw the scene in Colorado yesterday, and if you saw Don Mattingly's face, you got to admit the wild card isn't that bad. It was a season that gave us Cal Ripken's evenings in Baltimore, something none of us will ever forget. The Cleveland Indians are in the postseason for the first time in 41 years. Albert Bell, 50 homers, 50 doubles. No player has ever done that. The Boston Red Sox, reborn in Fenway in the AL East. Greg Maddox, another season of mid-1 ERAs for the Braves. Hideo Nomo Mania with the Dodgers in an all-star game in which all the runs were scored on home runs. And now we have the Seattle Mariners, poised with a win today to get to the postseason for the first time in their 19-year history. And the California Angels, a team that came from nowhere, almost had a disaster, but pulled themselves up by the bootstraps. We present two of the best lefties in baseball. One, Randy Johnson, who's going to win a Cy Young Award. One, Mark Langston, who was close, certainly, even when he pitched here with the Mariners. The Mariners and the Angels. How the West was won. An extra treat from the season of 95 that surprised us all. In the summer of 95, the California Angels took command of the American League West with their red-hot bats, amassing an 11-game lead by August 2nd. But then, an incredible slump ensued. They lost their all-star shortstop. That disrupted the lineup, and frustration reigned. Meanwhile, in the Northwest, there is uncertainty about the club's future in Seattle, and the Mariners' years seemed over with the wrist injury to their best player. But in Griffey's absence, the team's other stars have shown Jay Buhner, along with Tino and Edgar Martinez, have all had fabulous years to keep the M's in the race. Griffey's return has keyed the attack of the division crown, taking center stage as the Mariners made their move. Now three games ahead with five to play. But as remarkable as was the Halos collapse, they have suddenly made an unlikely comeback, winning five in a row. Now just one game remains. The division title is on the line. One team will move into the playoffs. One will go home. And the most intimidating pitcher in baseball stands at the gateway to the playoffs. The kingdom is rocking. More than 50,000 people here for the CSBN baseball special, a playoff to determine the champion of the American League West. The Angels and the Mariners, they're in a flat-footed tie, 78 and 66 apiece. Hello, everyone. I'm John Miller. Now, a playoff in baseball is special. This is only the ninth time it's ever happened. And many times in the past, a playoff has made history long remembered. The Giants and Dodgers in 51, Bobby Thompson's homer against Ralph Branca. The Red Sox and Yankees in 78, Bucky Dent going deep against Mike Torres. So you would think a lot of tension, perhaps some history here today. With me is Joe Morgan. And uh, today, the Mariners would seem to have the advantage. They've got the big unit, Randy Johnson, probably the Cy Young winner in the American League. And they're at home. But Joe, he is pitching on just three days rest. Well, he's pitching on three days rest, John, but that's not a problem for Randy. He is 3-0 and this season when he has had only three days rest. And I don't think that's a problem. But the one thing that surprised me is that the calmness of the players before the ball game. Both sides seem to be calm. Maybe they don't know what's at stake here. <laughs> All right. Now, for the Mariners, a prime left-hander, Mark Langston, a former Mariner, now with the Angels, 15-game winner. He's going, but he's had a bad arm, and he's working on only three days rest. Well, I think the three days rest may be the biggest problem for Langston. You're going to have a sore arm. If you're a starter in this league, you've got to get over 30 starts, you're going to have some stiffness in your arm. You just have to pitch through it. And I think Langston will be able to do that. I don't think he'll be able to go as long as Randy Johnson will. Now, what about late in the ball games? the team's bullpen? The Mariners have a, 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 a great closer, Norm Charlton, but the Angels have a great one-two punch, Troy Percival and Lee Smith. Smith may be an advantage to the Angels, maybe not though. Well, I don't think there is a big advantage here. I think, first of all, Randy Johnson can go longer, so maybe he can get to Charlton, who can go the last two to finish. I don't think you're going to have Langston being able to go six or seven innings. I think they're going to need more than Percival and Smith to win this ballgame today. All right, so we're about to get started. The Mariners are about to take the field. It's Langston, the former Mariner ace for the Angels, and the big unit. Randy Johnson, 17-2. 
for Seattle before more than 50,000. We'll be right back. Refuse to lose, that has been the mantra for the Seattle Mariners down the stretch, and they have not often lost, is the batting order for the Angels against Randy Johnson. Tony Phillips at third base. Gary DeSarcina back in the lineup at shortstop. Jim Edmonds in center field. Tim Salmon in right field. Chili Davis at DH. J.T. Snow at first. Those last four have all had great seasons. Maybe the rookie of the year, Garrett Anderson at left field. Andy Allenson, the catcher, and Rex Hudler is at second base, batting ninth. And on the mound, this is the story. Randy Johnson, 17 and 2, and they are 26 and 3 in his 29 starts, Joe. Yes, and he's also stopped 12 losing streaks for this ball club, and that's what he has to do to today because they've lost the last two. The one thing Johnson has to be careful of, John, is overthrowing. You have to be careful. He has a lot of adrenaline going. The fans are getting you excited. He has to be careful and not try to throw too hard early. He, the team that stays the calmest in the first three innings is the team that's going to have an advantage here today. So here we go. For the ninth time in the history of Major League Baseball, a playoff to determine a title. First pitch fouled on the right field line. And caught by Tino Martinez. Say that Martinez is very calm here as he runs this ball down, reaches out, plucks it out of the air. Good sign for the Mariners. Anything that keeps this crowd into it is going to be an advantage for the Mariners today. Now, Gary DeSarcina will come up. DeSarcina is having an outstanding season. And then an injury which almost ended his year. He was able just to get back within the last few days. A fastball a strike. But now, De Sarcina is back, and the Angels the last few days have played like they did before he got hurt, winning their last five games to get here. Strike two. Well, Randy seems to be under control. Now, in the second batter of the game, the crowd is on its feet with two strikes. Ninety-seven miles an hour, and our jugs got with that one. But he threw it almost like what you were warning against, Joe. Yeah. Overthrowing. Well, look, everyone's emotions are running high. You just have to be able to keep them in check. One and two. Two and two. In fact, I was a little surprised that Tony Phillips swung at the first pitch. Sometimes you want to see, take a look at Randy, see if he is going to overthrow. Just give him a chance to be wild, but they didn't give him a chance. Let's take a look at the defense there. You see Buner, Griffey, Coleman in the outfield, Blower, Soho, Cora, and Tino Martinez in the infield. Dan Wilson behind the plate in a big unit. Randy Johnson on the mound. Defense for much of the year has been a problem for the Mariners, but in these last two to three weeks, even their defense has been outstanding. Jim Edmonds the hitter strike one I think the key for the Angels is going to be how well Jim Edmonds Garrett Anderson and J.T. Snow handle Randy Johnson too high Jim Edmonds 33 homers 107 runs battered in salmon on deck with 34 homers 105 battered in slider strike two and my reason for bringing that up, John, is that these are the three left-handed hitters in the lineup that have done damage for the Angels. You figure Chili Davis and Salmon have a chance, but the left-handers are going to have to contribute something as well. Struck him out. The bat ends up at shortstop. Randy Johnson has retired the side in order. A standing ovation for the Mariners. Griffey will be due up third. No score after a half inning. No score. The playoff to determine the champion of the American League's Western Division. And the home team, the Seattle Mariners, about to come to bat against their one-time ace, Mark Langston. It'll be Vince Coleman in left field, Luis Soho at shortstop. Ken Griffey, and he's 
played like Griffey the last couple of weeks. Edgar Martinez, the batting champion of the DH. Jay Buhner, an incredible year, 40 home runs. Mike Blowers, 96 RBIs at third base. Gino Martinez, well over 100 RBIs. Dan Wilson, the catcher, Joey Cora at second. On the mound, Mark Langston, a 15 game winner for the Angels. And there you see Mark Langston's number, 15 and 6. Had a pretty high earned run average, but Mark Langston throws hard, has a good breaking ball, and he is capable of shutting down these Mariners. He beat them in his only start this year, although his ball club scored 14 runs. He won 14 to 4. Vince Coleman will start it off. Coleman, a switch hitter, will bat right handed. He was sort of a, a missing piece to the Mariner puzzle when they were able to pick him up from the Kansas City Royals. He a answered a need for them at leadoff. I mean, he's a legitimate leadoff hitter, stolen base artist, and also in left field at the same time. And he has been the igniter since they picked him up. First ball swinging. Hudler. So far in the ballgame, John, the Mariners have done everything to excite the crowd. This is a hustling play. Hustle always excites the crowd. Look, he even makes a bad step there. I'm surprised he didn't injure himself. He reaches out. He leaps for the bag. He is safe. But that's an all-out effort that the fans will appreciate. So the things that they're doing so far are keeping the fans in the ballgame. Now Vince Coleman is at first base, and sometimes he doesn't stay there very long. He has 42 steals for the year. They've been caught only 15 times. Here is Luis Soho, and he's kind of come out of nowhere. Look at that batting average, 286, with seven homers and 36 batted in. Langston, a real tough pickoff move. He's tough to, to get a jump against if you're a, a Vince Coleman. Well, the one thing that he does do, though, Johnny, is has a pretty high leg kick. If you read him, it gives you a little more time to run. In fact, you can get a bigger lead and not commit as quickly because he has such a high leg kick. And one other thing about Vince Coleman, not only has he been good offensively, but he has also been a leader and a stabilizing influence in the clubhouse because he has been in World Series play before. He has been in postseason play. One of only four Mariners who've ever been there. That's the move right there that will have the most effect on Vince Coleman. That step off where you throw while you're stepping off. Because if once you kick your leg up, you give the, the runner time to get back. This is a quick move. This is the quickest way he can get the ball to first base. Very close. Langston in his days with the Mariners. There's the same play and he's back again. Langston in his days with the Mariners. He sometimes would have a, a week here at the Kingdom where they didn't get as many fans as they have today. I yes. think Vince. That move there will not bother Vince. And he has such a light, high leg kick, he should be able to read him and go to the plate. The move that will bother him is that quick step off move. And you see, Vince is actually shortening his lead to compensate for that. And the pitch to the plate, fouled back. One ball, one strike to Luis Soho. And the big power is coming up next. Griffey on deck, then Edgar, then Buner, then Blowers, and Tino. Five sluggers in a row. Griffey. Sometimes you talk to guys to see if they're nervous or not. Right. It's almost like Griffey was born to play in this game today. The bunt. Langston got him at first. Nice play by Langston. Coleman has been moved over. That's a nice play there because and a good play I think for the Mariners. Try to jump on top. Keep these fans in the game. Well, here's the reaction to Ken Griffey Jr. A standing ovation for Griffey. Griffey has 17 home runs for the year in only 257 at bats. Coming back from a, a broken wrist, which it was sort of astonishing that he was able to come back from that this year. In the last couple of weeks, he's been hitting like the Griffey that you remember. The healthy Griffey. The shortstop taking the throw there. That's Dean Sarcina. And to go back to what you're talking about, his personality born to play in these games, 
I was talking to him before the game and I said well how do you hit Langston because the statistics sometimes do not tell a true story you may have some hits but you didn't feel comfortable or you may not have hits and you did feel comfortable so I asked him and he said I don't even know he said but he's got to throw strikes today <laughs> I mean that's a great attitude to have in a game like this one out runner at second last of the first no score there's the breaking ball very high. On deck is the league batting champion. You see, Griffey has held his own against Langston, but Langston could say the same thing. Exactly. So that's probably why he said, hey, I don't remember. It means that he's nothing outstanding and nothing very poor. Pickoff developing, but not coming to fruition with De Sarcina again cutting in behind Coleman. And the reason that they're trying to keep Coleman so close is because it's very easy to still third base off of a left handed pitcher especially one with the high leg kick like Langston you can get a running start and you can get a bigger lead from second base the outfield is deep and straight away for Griffey yeah. down the right field line but foul deep down the line home run distance but very much foul that was an interesting pitch there John because Langston was still looking at Coleman at second base when he started his motion to the plate meaning he didn't pick up his target quick enough and he hung that slider inside one ball one strike Coleman is running and he is out at third well that's why they were trying to keep him close the only bad thing about the situation he was stealing in is that you have a left handed hitter in up at the plate so the catcher Allison has a clear shot at third and he can see you all the way I think it's a good play to try to steal third but you have to make sure that you can make it very close play there very close play watch Coleman's left hand very close but he's out Greg cost the third base umpire making the call so two down and nobody on now two and one the count to Griffey from the wind up Langston three and one well you saw Tony Phillips put his leg in front of the corner of the bag. Right. And I think cost bought it all, although we could see clearly in the replay that he did get that in. He had lifted the leg up and he had gotten in. And the only bad thing about the play. Three and one. And the full count now, three and two. The only bad thing about that play, John, is what that does now is takes away a little bit of Vince Coleman's aggressiveness. You know, you do not want to get caught stealing again in this ball game. So he may not be quite as aggressive the next time he's on base as he was at this particular time. Two down, three and two to Griffey. And he draws the walk on the check swing. The appeal denied by Cost. So the Mariners get another base runner with two down. And here's the league's batting champion for the second time in four years, Edgar Martinez. And a, a solid MVP candidate, I might add. Look at that slugging percentage. He doesn't just hit singles to right. This guy, 29 homers. 52 doubles. He has walked 115 times. So he knocks in runs, he hits extra base hits, and he's always on base for the guys behind him to drive in. And he has also had great success against Langston. I don't think there would be any left hander that he doesn't handle well. Ball one. And the reason for that is because he stays into the middle of the diamond. And most right handers that handle left handed pitching well will hit a lot of balls to right center left center they'll stay back through the middle of the diamond and that's where he hits it's for Puerto Rico a very disciplined hitter he says he learned that discipline from his grandfather and the timeout is because Griffey's over at first base trying to clear some dirt they had a football game here yesterday and I think the dirt at first base is a little soft because we saw Coleman doing a lot of work over there ball one to Edgar Martinez with Jay Buhner on deck Ball two, I beg your pardon. Two and oh to Edgar. And again, if you don't throw him a strike, he's not likely to swing. And if you walk him, Jay Buehler's got 40 home runs lurking in the on deck circle. Too high. Three and oh. Edgar looks down to San Perlazzo as Jay Buehler. Gets ready for his at bat, his possible at bat on deck. He does have 29 home runs. Yes. Edgar. And a base hit. On a 
3 0 pitch. Griffey stops at second, and Edgar gets his base hit. And here comes Buner, the big home run hitter for the Mariners. Forty home runs in 466 at bats. That's better than one homer for every 12 times up. Well, John, letting him hit 3 and 0, which I thought he might do because he does have 29 home runs, you let you turn him loose in this situation. Plus, it also establishes in the player's mind we're going to be aggressive today. That's what Lou Pinello was telling him. Ball one. Jay Buhner in 33 official at bats against Langston in his career has struck out 17 times. And remember, Lou Pinella has played in these one game playoffs, so he knows what it's all about. And I think he wants to be very aggressive early. Two men on, one man out. Langston has only retired one hitter. He got him chasing that low slider. It is one ball and one strike. The only man who retired was Soho, who bunted. He was willing to make it out. Giving up a single to Coleman, walk to Griffey, and a single to Edgar Martinez. Then the caught stealing right now is the key play of the inning. Two and one. Marcel Latchman, he well knows that it doesn't get easier after Buner. The man on deck has 96 RBIs this year. <laughs> And Bowers and a lot of grand slams. Oh man. <laughs> and the breaking ball strike two call. That was a clutch pitch right there because if he misses with that pitch he's in real trouble. Then it's three and one he has to give Buner a pitch to hit. He got the breaking ball on the inside corner for strike two. So breaking ball again. I think he wants to get him out with a breaking ball. Yes. But I don't know how he thinks. <laughs> The high fastball, full count. Now I think you'll see a breaking ball. Flowers would be next. Two on, two out, and again, the huge crowd rises to its feet in unison at the Kingdom. The runners go. The slider. Phillips. To snow when the threat is over. Langston has survived the first. Tim Salmon, Chili Davis, and JT Snow, some Angels power coming up. No score after one. John Miller, Joe Morgan back at the Kingdom as we go to the second inning. No score in the game. With us here today to help with our coverage is our colleague Dave Campbell. Let's go down to Dave right now. Thank you, John. You know, with all the emotion here, you still have to get back to some of the basics, though. Getting the first out in the inning. You get the first out, you cut down the other team's chances of scoring. Number two, throwing first pitch strikes. Randy Johnson threw three first pitch strikes in the inning, and the team that scores first wins 67% of the time. We'll keep an eye on all that today. Guys? Thank you, Dave. And here we go, inning number two. Tim Salmon, look at those numbers 332, 34 homers, 105 driven in. Both of these teams. Have extraordinary power. Yes. As does this man. Fastball. Strike one. Jim Salmon has never fared well against Randy Johnson. Not many have. Slider. Two strikes. There are two pitches that I feel would be very effective against Salmon with Johnson. One is the breaking ball down out of the strike zone and the fastball up and out of the strike zone. Strike three call. And maybe a fastball down the middle. <laughs> yeah, maybe one at 96 <laughs> yeah, miles right an hour. down the middle. Said, get out of here. I mean, this one explodes. You see. Simon shaking his head. Now watch this ball explode. It was supposed to be a high fastball, but he didn't get it up there. He wanted it to be high. You see the target up high by Wilson, but he doesn't get it up high, but it's still strike three. Now Chili Davis, and he is the the veteran cool head in this ball club. He and Tony Phillips and the heater. 
That was 97 miles an hour. Strike one. Well, he told me before the ball game that he had hit three home runs off of Johnson. He said Johnson's gotten me a few times, but he didn't tell me exactly how many times he struck him out 20 times in like 40 at bats. So I'd say Johnson has the edge there. We got a piece of it. Joey Cora. Not number two. Two dangerous sluggers have been disposed of, and here comes another one. One of the young angels, J.T. Snow, who had a breakthrough year. Snow with 24 homers and 102 runs batted in. Both of these teams have three hitters in their lineup with more than 100 RBIs. The Mariners have a fourth, Mike Blowers with 96, and the Angels have a fourth, Chili Davis with 86, even though he was on the disabled list for three weeks. That one has hit well. Deep center. Griffey back. There. He's got it. Six pitches and out. Mike Blowers and Tino Martinez. No score in the game. Here come the Mariners now. Last of the second ESPN with our exclusive coverage of this playoff for the championship of the American League West and for the Seattle Mariners Mike Blowers coming to the plate okay, who himself has had a breakthrough season 96 runs batted in and he takes ball one from Mark Langston and he has a good day today he can reach the 100 RBI stage because all the statistics count today on this in this year's you know statistical category is a regular season game right also everything counts. Bobby Thompson hit that famous homer in 1951. That was the last homer he hit in the regular season that year. Joe Negro won his 20th game right. in the playoff that you played in in 1980, 1980 for Houston. Yes. Mark Langston got one more chance to win his 16th. If he can win this one. 2 0 the count. They chase Langston's pitch that time. And that was a good pitch from Langston because the ball really tailed away. It looked like it was going to be a fastball toward the middle of the plate and it ran right away from Blowers. Good pitching, tail right away. On deck, Tino Martinez, he's hitting seventh. All he's done this year is drive in 110 runs with 31 homers. Two and one. There's Tino, another guy who just rose up this year and had a, a huge year. Both teams have numerous players who had seasons like that. Three and two on the foul ball. Well, Flowers is a, a streaky guy, so he's well capable of getting four RBIs today. He would be the fourth in the club if he could do it. But it many's the game this year where he's had. Four or five. He's had as many as eight RBIs more than once yes. in a game this year. In one incredible stretch, 23 game stretch, he had 46 RBIs. The slider, and he walks. Second walk allowed by Langston. Coming up now, Friday night at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, the NHL returns to ESPN as the Colorado Avalanche hosts the Detroit Red Wings. Then on Saturday, turn to ESPN2 for an NHL doubleheader. At 7.30 Eastern, Mario Lemieux hopes to make his return as Pittsburgh hosts Toronto. Then at 10.30, Colorado takes on Wayne Gretzky and the LA Kings. ESPN2 on Saturday, 80 NHL games, 45 college football games, and 170 college basketball games on ESPN2. Here is Tino Martinez, ball one. What you're seeing between difference between the two pitchers so far, John, Langston has a smaller margin for error because he can't overpower the hitters. So you see him trying to change speeds and hit the corners. Ball two. Right, see that's just off the corner. He doesn't have trouble throwing strikes, but he want, does not want to get any balls in the middle of the plate. The big unit can just overpower you with the fastball. He's throwing a first pitch strike to everybody. Exactly. And, and Langston has to be more careful. I mean, that's just the nature of the beast. Langston has thrown a first pitch strike only one time to the seven hitters that he's faced. Dan Wilson is on deck. Lauer's not much of a threat to try and steal. He has two steals this year. Snow in the bag with him. This uh, Angels club has got some pretty good defensive players, Snow being one of them. It's a foul, playable. Tony Phillips, and 
Tino Martinez is at number one here in the Mariners second. Well, went after the fastball that was a little up. It was two and zero. Oh. He knew a fastball was coming. That was a little bit out of the strike zone. Now here is Dan Wilson, sort of an unheralded member of this ball club, and Wilson has hit 278. He's a very fine receiver, strong arm. And he's got nine home runs at 49 batted in. Not a bad guy to have hitting eight. Especially when everybody else in your lineup's got 40 homers. <laughs> one out, one on. And uh, Blowers is back. Joey Cora is on deck. They're down at the tail end of the Mariner batting order here. The Mariners on August the 2nd finished up play that day 13 games behind the Angels. Fastball at the knees. There's a first pitch strike. They were 13 back and Texas was 11 back. In 55 games since then the Mariners were able to make up 13 games. In fact five or six days ago they were three games ahead after being 13 behind. Breaking ball. Phillips is one. And two. Double play. Nice turn at second by Rex Hudler. Wilson hits the double play, and the Mariners are retired. Still scoreless after two. Garrett Anderson, the outstanding left handed hitting youngster of the Angels, will be leading it off against Randy Johnson when we return to Seattle. Stay with us. From the Kingdom in Seattle, John Miller, Joe Morgan with you. And uh, the ninth playoff in the history of Major League Baseball. It doesn't very often happen. It happened in 1946. The Cardinals ended up winning the, the National League pennant over the Dodgers. In fact, five times it's happened in the National League, and all five of the playoffs in the National League involved the Dodgers. Two previous times it happened in the American League, and both of those involved the Boston Red Sox. This is the first time that there's ever been a playoff in Major League history. That didn't involve either the Dodgers or the Red Sox. And we'll see if history is made here today. At the Kingdom, as the Angels and the Mariners have at it, taking their place in that uh, select list of playoff combatants over the years. Garrett Anderson fouling one away against Randy Johnson. Well, we'll see how this young player here fares against Randy. He's only faced Randy one time, so he didn't do too well, although he did get a clutch hit. He said he struck out a couple of times. But for a young player to have to face Randy Johnson in a situation like this, very difficult. Difficult for a young guy, an old guy? Uh... Well, a young guy that's not <laughs> used to facing hard throwers or, you know, not used to Major League pitching. This is his first year of facing Major League pitching. What a, what a day for Garrett Anderson to be here. One and two the count. I mean, this guy came out of nowhere hitting 323. He started the year in the minor leagues. 16 homers, 69 batted in. About the time they brought him up, that's when their lineup really started to gel. The slider got him swinging. Well, he was overmatched. Johnson kept everything away, and you can see Garrett Anderson bailing a little bit. Watch his front foot. See, it's going toward first base. You cannot hit Randy Johnson like that. You have to stay in there, and I guess he will learn a lesson. He'll get better as he goes along because he is a good hitter. Here's Andy Allenson, journeyman catcher, been around a long time, and he fouls one away, but he's had some pretty good numbers. Not against the league this year, as you can see there. He's had terrible numbers, but against Randy Johnson in the past. Sort of Bob Euchre versus Sandy Koufax <laughs> all over again. Euchre, what was his lifetime average? 200? Well, he says it was around that. I don't know. I'd have to look <laughs> on the bubble gum. 200 or less, but against Koufax, he hit over 400. Tells you that he was a good fastball hitter. Foul ball. One and two to count. John, we were talking about the attitude of the players before the ball game, and you mentioned I was in the 1980 playoff with the Dodgers. We went into L.A. the last three games of the season with a three-game lead. The Dodgers won all three, and we had a one-game playoff. And I went in the clubhouse before the game, and I looked around, and everybody was kind of solemn. One and two to Allenson. Struck him out.
That is a big time fastball up. I think that's what you have to do 98 miles an hour. I mean it doesn't get much better than this and it's also up. That's the key. You cannot hit a 90 mile, 98 mile an hour fastball up. There are a lot of people that tell me that they've been registered on the gun with low fastballs in the high 90s. I don't believe that. You have to be up high to get that fastball at 98 miles an hour. I'm going to finish my story. I looked around the clubhouse, John, and all the guys were a little nervous. It, it seemed that way to me anyway. And I said to him, I said, you know, we've blown three games in a row. If we lose this fourth game, I think we should move this team to Manila and call ourselves the Manila Folders. Everybody caught started laughing a little bit, kind of relieved a lot of tension. We went out and won the ball game. I, I just won it. I mean, destroyed the Dodgers right. that day. After having lost all three to them over the weekend, that was the last time that there was a playoff in the major leagues, 1980. And then the Astros and the Phillies went on to have one of the great league championship series in National League history. That was a Fabulous series. Rex Hudler taking the gas, 97 miles an hour too low. Hudler, former Marine, real handy player, used to be with the Cardinals, and also started his career with the Yankees. The winner of this game will travel to New York to meet the Yankees in the playoffs beginning tomorrow night. Two and two the count. The one thing you cannot do with Randy Johnson is chase any pitches out of the strike zone. If you chase pitches out of the strike zone, you're dead. Everybody on their feet again at the Kingdom. Johnson has retired everybody he's faced. Out away. That pitch on our jugs gun read out at 100 miles an hour. That's interesting. Must be a fast jugs gun they're using. He's throwing hard, but 100 miles an hour is up there. Well, fast or slow or whatever, he's bringing it. Two or three miles an hour faster than his other ones have been. The slider. He hit it hard, but fouled out on the field line. Well back into the lower deck. Butler hanging tough up there. Mark Langston, he's pitched two shutout innings. But he knows he may have to pitch all shutout innings to stay in this game with Johnson. Two down, nobody on. Third inning, no score. They got a piece of it again. And look at Hudler after they found that one off, staring out at Randy Johnson. Well, Hudler is a battler, and that's why he has been in there the last week or so. He's a guy that makes things happen, as his manager once said about him. They're not always positive things, but he makes things happen. He's an aggressive player. And he's hit well against Johnson the few times he's faced him. He's fouled off three in a row here. And four in a row. This is the first real big battle that an Angels hitter has given Johnson. You're right. Johnson is thrown consistently here to Hudler between 97 and 100 on our jugs gun with one slider mixed in, but Hudler's been able to fight them off here. score the Mariners coming up we'll be back no score last of the third inning from the Kingdom in I Seattle show, I want to show you what makes Johnson so tough he throws 98 miles an hour watch him sling this ball watch he throws sidearm the ball starts out towards first base and then breaks sharply over the outside corner that's almost impossible for a right hander to hit and you see the reaction he was staring back at Hutler as he walked off and he says I got you he okay. says you're just one of five so far. <laughs> Grab some bench buddy. That's five strikeouts for Johnson in three innings. Well, Joey Cora. Hitting a fly ball to right. There's Salmon. And just like that there is one away. Mark Langston uh, getting the first batter of the inning out for the first time. Here comes Vince Coleman the leadoff man. No score last out of the third. 
I think say uh, Randy Johnson kind of made a statement there in the top of the inning, well, striking out the side. Yes, I, I think he made a statement the, from the first pitch of this ball game when he did throw a strike. He says, "You're going to have to beat me today. I'm going to throw strikes, and I'm going to give you my best stuff. I'm going to give it to you as long as I have it." He's not thinking about throwing nine innings right now. He's just thinking about going as hard as he can for as long as he can. Vince Coleman got an infield hit his first time, but eventually he was caught trying to steal third in that inning. A little bit low from Langston. Coleman saved his best for the end of the year. His last 68 at bats of the season, a 353 average. That's a strike on the outside. One ball and one strike. Coleman didn't like the call. Well, you have to like Vince Coleman for another reason, John. He is a guy that has resurrected his career. I mean, he was almost dead. He was in the minor leagues. Everybody's giving up on him. He came back with Kansas City, played well, helped him to get in the pennant race, and he's now trying to help the Mariners win a pennant. The slider, strike two. Well, in fact, before the Mariners got him, he was designated for assignment by Kansas City back in August. I mean, they. They didn't even wait to trade him first. Right. They just, in effect, said, We're going to release you if we can't trade you. And then the Mariners picked him up. Look at that consistency. Giving chase, JT Snow makes the catch. So Coleman fouls out to Snow. Snow is one of the, the best fielding first basemen in the majors. I mean, he's right up there with Mattingly and Joyner, and you, you name a good first baseman, and he's right there with him. Down and here is Luis Soho. Soho pushed down a sacrifice bunt his first time. Just uh, not so long ago in a big ball game with Texas in this ballpark, Joe. Maybe you worked it. Luis Soho exploded with six RBIs. Two down, Soho singles, and Ken Griffey will come to bat. No score, third inning. Well, yesterday afternoon, at this time, they didn't even know, know if there was going to be a game here today. And less than 24 hours later, they sold it out. I mean, they have the fever here in Seattle. 19 years this club has been around. They've never won anything, never really come close until now. And the folks here have caught the fever. Oh, and one to Griffey. He walked his first time. Two down, a runner at first in the third. Nice pitch on the outside. Well, the first time up, he appeared that he wanted to get Griffey out with breaking balls. He threw him several sliders. So he comes back this time with Griffey looking for a slider and he's throwing him a couple of fastballs away. And the, the breaking ball, yeah. Foul down the right field line. Oh, and two to count to Griffey. But that pitch hung inside. If he would have thrown that pitch on the first pitch, Griffey probably would have hit it hard. But he changed Griffey's thought pattern by going away with a couple of fastballs. That was not a good breaking ball. It was right in the middle of the plate. There's a better one, but Griffey was able to check his swing. One and two, the count. Langston. Manager of the Angels, Marcel Latchman, who took a ball club that many predicted would finish last in the West. Fastball for two high. Here are the Angels one game away from either going into the playoffs against all odds or one game away from going down in history as one of the teams that had the biggest collapse ever in baseball. But for Latchman, it's been a great year one way or the other. Foul back. Two and two. He's trying to get that fastball in. But it's interesting they're also going to play J.T. Snow behind Soho at first base. That gives J.T. Snow a little more coverage there if Griffey was to pull a ball down 
toward first base. It might not be a bad idea for the Mariners just to go ahead and send him. If he makes it, you're okay. If he doesn't, then Griffey starts off the next inning for you. Snyder and Griffey lunges for it, gets a piece of it. Back out of play. Two balls, two strikes. The battle continues. The league's batting champion, Edgar Martinez, would be next. He's on deck. Of course, uh, Griffey is thinking maybe not of hitting one anywhere near Stone. He's got a fan up in the second deck. I think he'd like to send this one to. Caught by Rex Hudler. And that ends the inning. One hit and one left. We've played three. Still scoreless. The Angels will be coming up now for the second time around against Randy Johnson, Phillips, Dee Sarcina, and Edmonds. We'll be back. Well, arguably two of the finest left-handers in baseball going today. They won seven strikeout titles between them, all here with Seattle. The two winningest pitchers in Seattle history. Randy Johnson is obviously overpowering throwing strikes. Mark Langston is using everything he has. He's won six gold gloves. He made a good fielding play. He got Vince Coleman thrown out because he was able to get the ball to the plate quickly. All right, David, here we go now. Randy Johnson back to work. You see only 33 pitches thrown by Randy. And nearly three quarters of those for strikes. Langston's had to labor much more already at 45 pitches through three innings. Tony Phillips, he fouled out to Tino Martinez. Tino making a sensational play on it to start the game. Ball one. And it was interesting. He swung at the first pitch of the game, Joe, because right. Tony Phillips, of all people, I mean, this is a guy who works the count. He has walked 113 times this year. Well, he may have been wanting to send a message to Johnson that they were going to be aggressive as well. Chuido. This is the first time Johnson has really fallen behind like this. See, Phillips, he, he's the igniter for the Angels. Not a base dealer like Coleman, but he gets on base a lot more than Coleman. High in the air, deep left center. Griffey back. And Justin from the wall, he makes the game. One down. Again, that's surprising to me that Phillips would swing 2 and 0 when you know his job is to ignite. But remember, he has 26 home runs, so I guess he said I can go big fly too. It's a fastball. This is a little up. This was probably ball three. And you know, he, he, I, I'm just surprised that he is being so aggressive against Randy Johnson this this so far in the ball game. Here is Gary DeSarcina. One out, nobody on. And the Angels have not yet put a man on base against Randy Johnson. Ten in a row he has retired. Five of them on strikeouts. But a couple of deep fly balls hit now. Snow hit one in the second. Phillips here in the fourth. But each of those ended up being routine. One ball and one strike to count. Edmonds, the start of the Angels' power, is on deck. Phillips uh, had a move made by general manager Bill Bavese yes. to get him from the Tigers. That's just outside. One ball, or two balls and one strike to count now. John, Dave Campbell mentioned both Randy Johnson and Langston being the finest pitchers in the history of the Mariners. In 1989, Langston was here for the with the Mariners. That one, Joey Cora from shallow right throws him out. He saw Cena retire. Two down. In 1989, he was work here with the Manners and considered maybe the best pitcher in the American League at that time. And he was traded to the Montreal Expos. And Randy Johnson came here as part of the trade. The Expos were in a pennant race, and they wanted, they thought they had a chance of winning the championship if they could get another quality pitcher. And they did in Langston. They did not win. Langston left the next year as a free agent. And went to the Angels. Yeah. So it, the fact is, Randy Johnson. For Langston turns out to be a great trade, but they also had a couple other pitchers involved as well. Jim Edmonds, the hitter, the powerful left-handed slugger, struck out his first time. Eleven in a row retired by Johnson. Where was that pitch? All two. Well, that's what Johnson would like to know. John Schulock, the home plate umpire, not giving it to him. And that fastball in there for a strike. 
those two pitches it looked like Edmonds was just going to take both of them the one ball no strike pitch and also the two and oh. Fastball and the foul is out of play two and two now to Edmonds. I would think if you're a left handed hitter you wouldn't want to spot Randy Johnson any pitches any strikes. On every two strike count in this game from Randy Johnson the crowd has risen to its feet. Slider strikeout number six. Johnson has retired of an order for four innings. He's been perfect and he has struck out half of them. Edgar Martinez Jay Buhner and Mike Flowers coming up no score. Randy Johnson has held up his end of it. He's been perfect for four innings. Now the vaunted Mariner offense tries to get it going. Edgar Martinez his second straight base hit. Edmonds picks it up. Edgar is two for two. You know he's still got a chance and a piece of some history. No right handed hitter in the American League has finished a year at 360 or better since Joe DiMaggio in 1939. Edgar came into this game today hitting 354 and now he is two for two. And again as Joe mentioned earlier the statistics count in this game as in a regular season. Game. It's just an extension of the regular season. Here is Jay Buhner. John I think the Mariners have to be careful here in, in that. Yeah Randy Johnson is pitching great. He's doing great but we have to score some runs. So they have to put something up here pretty quickly. The high fastball. 0 1 to Buner. He grounded a third his first time. So you think the longer it goes scoreless, the more the pressure mounts for the Mariners to get it exactly, done? Exactly, because I think Langston is getting his feet on the ground, and I mean, the longer he goes, the more confidence he gains. One ball, one strike. I mean, in a very real way, Langston is the key to the Angels hopes here today. I mean you know Johnson I mean he's the best yes, that's the point. in the league. That's the point you know what you're going to get from Johnson most of the time. He changed up on him. and that's uh, been a big pitch for Langston in the last few years at first he always threw hard, hard but he didn't have that change up and when he mastered a change up to go with a curveball slider and his fastball if any two of them are working he's usually pretty tough. Ball missing inside. John, the split fingered fastball was the pitch of the 80s, the late 80s, and I think the changeup is the pitch of the 90s. Just about every good pitcher has a changeup. Two and two, the count to Buter. And back to the bag at first, Edgar Martinez. Edgar not a threat to run. He's had four steals this year. No score last of the fourth. And he changed up again for the strikeout. That is his first strikeout. And if you watch Langston, he has great motion for a changeup because he kicks his leg so quickly, he jumps at you. Everything jumps at you, and then he just takes his speed off the ball. But when he jumps at you, you gear up real quickly because you think it's a fastball coming quick, and you're always out in front. You can see how far out in front the unit is of that changeup. So his motion is perfect for a changeup. Now on our jugs gun we've been getting Langston with his fastball today consistently around between 86 and 90 but mostly 88 89 and that changeup came in there at 77. Here's Flowers. Oh and one the count. I believe you can pitch in the big leagues if your fastball is over 85 miles an hour with some movement on it. You can be a good pitcher you can pitch in the big leagues with anything but to be a good pitcher if you're above 85 with some movement. You can pitch in the big leagues because you can change speeds and have a good breaking ball that you can get away with. You do not have to have a hundred mile an hour fastball to win in the big leagues. That's Greg Maddox. One ball and one strike to Blowers. He walked his first time. And you see uh, two straight pitches now. Langston seems reluctant to throw the fastball to this guy. The first part of the game, he was reluctant to throw the fastball for a strike to any of these right handed hitters. But he is gaining a little more confidence as the game goes along. And that's in there. One ball and two strikes now. You saw the catcher, Allison, on the outside. He moved well across behind the plate. 
to get that one to the inside. You can see if Lowers has hit fairly well against Langston. One ball and two strikes. Edgar Martinez at first. There's no score in the last of the fourth inning. That was the heat. Two and two. Well, he wanted that to be a strikeout pitch on this particular hitter. He had he had him two strikes. He wanted to throw the high fastball, not that high, but he wanted it up and up and out of the strike zone and try to get Flowers to chase it. The outfield deep and straight away. Back to the back at first is Edgar Martinez. Snow on the back with him. We got six umpires working by the way today. We should mention, just as you would have in a, a World Series or a playoff situation, there are umpires. On both the left and right field lines, in addition to the regular four umpires. So there's a, a postseason atmosphere here at the Kingdom. This uh, could be two. There's one. Two. And the Mariners are gone. Tim Salmon, Chili Davis, and JT Snow coming up. No score. Back to the American League Western Division playoff. The winner is the champion and will go to New York to begin the divisional playoffs against the Yankees. There's strike one to Tim Salmon, the Angels cleanup hitter. He struck out looking his first time. He'll be followed by Chili Davis and J.T. Snow. Randy Johnson has not yet allowed a base runner. Twelve in a row he has retired, six of them on strikes. Out of play off to the right. But again, Joe, when guys like Salmon and Davis, Snow, Edmonds, when they're up there and you see the score 0 0, you know at any time any one of them is capable of hitting one over the wall here. Well, if Johnson makes a mistake anywhere in the middle of the lineup, he can get hurt by one swing of the bat. Fastball is too high. One and two. And again, the big Kingdom crowd on its feet. Almost. As if through the sheer force of its will, the Korean is another strikeout for Johnson. Slider, strike three call. John, we talked about this pitch earlier. A right handed hitter cannot hit this pitch. Now, watch, he drops down, sidearm, bar starts way outside. That ball's way out there, and it just dives toward the outside corner for strike three. I mean, it is way outside when it's about halfway to the plate and then it just dies because he kind of throws his sidearm and he gets more side spin on it and it breaks sharply across the plate. You can't hit it if you're right handed. Chili Davis now. Whoa. Chili looked like an old man on that one. The high hard one. Oh and won the count. Chili popped the second his first time. Tim Salmon has gone down looking twice. Against Johnson. Two of Johnson's seven strikeouts. What's more, the strikeouts are beginning to, to mount up more quickly now. He has struck out five of the last seven men he's faced. Seven of the 13 he's faced in the game. Slider is low. Two and one to Chili Davis. See, he throws two different sliders. That one he threw more from the top, but the one he throws from the side is so far outside the right-hander gives up on, it. and it's so hard and fast that you do not have time to, to recognize the spin on the ball. Two and two now. Again, the high hard one, and Davis couldn't catch up to it. Johnson has not yet gone to a three-ball count to a batter in this game. Chili Davis is upset because he chased two pitches out of the strike zone but when a guy is throwing 99 miles an hour it's hard to lay off and you do not have a lot of time to decide whether that pitch is in the strike zone or not. This is definitely a ball but you just do not have time to decide. The fans are beginning to chant Randy. Strike one to Snow a slider. Snow flying out deep to center his first time. 
Johnson has struck out Edmonds, Salmon, and Davis in succession. Strike two. And they're back on their feet. And anyone that says baseball doesn't belong in Seattle have not been here the last couple of weeks. One ball and two strikes. John, when we saw Randy Johnson early in the season on a Sunday night in Anaheim, he threw about as well as he's throwing now, and we said then that he was going to have a fantastic season. He is just overpowered. He got a piece of it. Snow stays alive. One ball and two strikes. Right now, that's about the, the best thing you can say for any Angels hitter is on two strikes, he's staying alive <laughs> he's with staying a foul. Alive. John, I had the privilege, and I call it that, a privilege of facing Sandy Koufax. And I tell you what, Randy Johnson reminds me of Sandy Koufax. Well, what we saw back then in the second week of the season was that Randy Johnson who had made himself a great pitcher with right. great stuff, keeping the ball down, throwing strikes all the time. He's got nine in five innings. He's been perfect for five innings. The big unit is trying to take the Mariners to New York. No score. Tino Martinez coming up. We are scoreless here in Seattle. Randy Johnson has been perfect. He's been overpowering. He's been the show. But meanwhile, Mark Langston, not as impressively, but he's matched him zero for zero. Is Tino Martinez. He is fouled to third in his only previous at bat. 31 homers and 110 runs batted in, and he's hitting seventh in the order against Langston. The changeup. One ball and one strike. See the, the difference in the way that Johnson and Langston have gone about it in their respective lines. Two walks, one strike out, four hits allowed for Langston. The only statistic that really counts there is the zero and the runs. Yeah. The rest of it does not matter. The Oakland Athletics in 1974 won the American League Championship Series in Baltimore on a day where they got only one hit. But it was good enough to win the ball game for them and send them to the World Series where they won their third consecutive World Championship. So Johnson has been incredible so far today. And yet, he doesn't have the lead. Three and one. He swing. No, ball four. Join ESPN Saturday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern, 8.30 Pacific for College Game Day. Chris Fowler, Craig James, and Lee Corso will be live from Tallahassee, where Florida State will be hosting Miami. Then at 12.30, the surprising Northwestern Wildcats, three and one for the year. And ranked number 25 in the nation, travel to Ann Arbor to take on number seven, Michigan. And then at 7.30, it's Miami and number one ranked Florida State on ESPN. Here's Dan Wilson now for the fourth time in the five innings of the game. The Mariners have gotten their leadoff man aboard. Ordinarily, you'd think that would be a tendency that would lead to the destruction of Langston. And, and yet you're wondering, Joe, is this... Is this something that maybe is indicative that he's living on borrowed time or is it bad news for the Mariners that they've not been able to take advantage of their ability to get these men on. I think it's the bad news for the Mariners because once if you continue to get your leadoff hitter on you get runners on you have to bring them around you have to figure a way to bring them around. I'm not so sure he's on borrowed time of course percentages are in the Mariners favor because you have him facing Randy Johnson. The butt by Wilson, but it's foul. Wilson grounded into a double play to end the second. Twice Langston has gotten a ground ball double play to end an inning. So he's had problems starting innings, but has been able to get out of the innings quite capably. I think it's a good idea here if you are Luke Pinella to go ahead and sacrifice. Try to get this one run on the board. Tough hitter on deck, Joey Cora. And makes contact. Langston wants to get the lead man, and he does. De Sarcina upended by Tino Martinez. And that's an example of what Dave Campbell was talking about earlier. 
about Langston being a gold glove fielder. You see how quickly he pounced off the mound. It was not a good bunt, but he pounced off the mound very quickly. Watch, this is not a good bunt. It should go down the first baseline. Goes back to him, but you see he gets in perfect position, makes a perfect throw to second base, and out easily there is Tino Martinez. So good fielding play there by Langston, although it was not a good bunt. And Tino came in hard to make sure that Lee Sarcina didn't try and double up Wilson. Here's Joey Cora. Not a power hitter, but he's a, he's a tough guy to strike out. Well, he's tough, especially if you could have gotten that runner to second base. Because then all he's got to do is poke a single someplace, and that's what he does best. He's hitting 296 for the year. Only three home runs. He's hitting 316 right handed. He flagged to right. In the third against Langston here today. Runner at first, one out. Slider, did he swing? No, says Jim Evans, the first base umpire. And the one thing to remember, John, in a tight ball game like this, you know, it's always the guys that can execute best who will manufacture runs and score runs. Let's not forget that the fact that he tried to bunt there, he did not move that runner along as they should have. It changes the whole inning if that runner's at second base. Breakdown in the mechanics. Base hit. Well, that underscores the failure yeah. to put him along. Exactly. And that's what Cora does best. He hits little line drives all around this ballpark. So if you can get a runner to second base, he can drive him in for you. And this fastball, he goes the other way. That's good hitting there by Joey Cora. Joey Cora now five for nine against Langston in his career. So here is Vince Coleman. And in this spot, they're asking Vince not to set the table, but to drive somebody in. Well, he had a big grand slam and maybe the biggest hit for the Mariners this year. Turned that whole ball game around against Oakland last yeah, weekend. We were down six to two. And he hit a grand slam to tie it to complete a six run inning that actually been down six nothing. In that game. And again, remember Vince Coleman has been here before, and, and that always helps you. No score. Last of the fifth. Two men on, one man out. Two and oh to Vince Coleman. The runners, there's Wilson at second base, Cora at first base. The fans incensed. And that Langston would dare pitch inside to Vince Coleman. <laughs> right. It's one of those situations, guys, where you might want to think about taking one for the team. <laughs> one came in there, and our judge got to 89 miles an hour. Soho on deck. Base hit. Garrett Anderson with the throw. Wilson is safe. Team John, when this season was over, and if we were able to win tonight's ball game, I would send a thank you card to the Kansas City Rawls for getting Vince Coleman over here for me. Vince Coleman, low fastball, he hits it in the hole, and you see that Wilson is coming around. Garrett Anderson slips. He has a chance here to throw, but he slips right there. He has a chance to possibly throw Wilson out. Wilson doesn't run that well because he's a catcher, but. Uh, a lot of the velocity was lost when he slipped. But you see the all out effort there by Wilson. And again, that's what keeps these fans in the ballgame all out hustle. And they do love their Mariners. There's Mike James. Starting to warm up in the Angels' bullpen. Bobby Cuellar, the pitching coach, has visited with Langston. The batter is Luis Soho. Now the Mariners have broken through for one. But after Soho, they get to the part of the order where they might. Consider breaking through for four or five. Griffey is on deck. Soho has had a sacrifice bunt and he is single. Two men on, one man out. Strike and it's 0 1. The runners, Cora, who's very fast at second base. Vince Coleman, who's even faster at first base. And Coleman has been doing this kind of a thing right. all month. 
He had been a key figure in the stretch run for the Mariners. Tony Phillips, he gets one at second. Hudler back to first. Nice play. Two double play. For the third time in five innings, an inning ending double play. But for the first time, Randy Johnson will take the mound ahead. Mariners won, Angels nothing, but it could have been more. It really could have. They've turned three double plays in this ball game, and none bigger than this one. Now watch Tony Phillips. He comes and gets this ball. A lot of third basemen would have backed up, taken it on a big hop, and got one. He charges. He throws the second. Now watch this great play by Hudler. Here's a guy that hasn't played all year, but he comes across and makes a double play under pressure. That's what this game is all about. That keeps these guys in the ball game. That kept Ken Griffey from coming up and possibly more in that inning. So that was a big play there for the California Angels. We are at the Kingdome for the ninth time in Major League history, a playoff to determine a champion. This one for the championship of the American League West, the Angels and Mariners in a flat-footed tie. The winner will go from here to begin the divisional playoffs at Yankee Stadium tomorrow. And now, for the first time, the Mariners have the lead. It is one to nothing, Seattle. And for the Angels, not only have they not scored against that man, Randy Johnson, they haven't even gotten the man on base. Not even close. And there's a strike to Garrett Anderson, the seventh place hitter in the order. Johnson has struck out nine in five innings. He has struck out seven of the last nine that he's faced. And the slider misses one ball and one strike, including the last four in a row. All sluggers, Edmonds, Salmon, Davis, and Snow. Slider, strike two. struck out in the third inning another inning in which Johnson struck out the side two and two as we saw way back when on Sunday night baseball in the second week of the season Joe when he's missing with that slider he's still keeping it down every exactly. slider down the third flowers Well, somebody put it in play anyway after four in a row had been struck out, starting with Edmonds. Slider! Salmon. Chili Davis. Snow. Four strikeouts against four guys, Joe, who have combined this year for 111 homers and 400 RBIs. And he blew them all away in order. It wasn't quite the. Uh, the All-Star game back in the 30s when Carl Hubble got five straight Hall of Famers, but it'll do for our purposes it, it today. It'll do. Yeah. And that is the 14th out of 16 hitters that he has started with a first pitch strike. That is amazing. And that's why he is pitching so well. And it just goes to show 14 out of 17. Yeah. One strike to count to Allenson. Ball with a fastball away. One ball and one strike. John, one of the questions you always have about a hard thrower like Johnson is can he win the big game and pitching here in Seattle he's never had to pitch big games before I think he is making a statement today saying yes I can win the big game. That's slider. It is one and two now. And here they are as if on cue every two strike count and there have been two strikes to almost every hitter the fans 50,000 plus have risen to their feet. A moral victory for Allenson. <laughs> 52,356 is the pay crowd, and that got somebody. Looks in like the Angels Anderson. dugout. Scared Anderson. Chuck Finley, one of those over. And is Marcel Latchman. Man, just what they need. Trainer having a look. Looks like he's okay. Two strikes. That one picked up by Flowers. And uh, to tell you how dominant Johnson has been, that's as close as the Angels have come to a base hit today. Well, he got the fastball in and jams it. See, right on the off, off the handle. That's the reason it didn't have enough sting on it to get through the infield. Flowers over to pick it up, and he throws him out. 
Two down, nobody on. Here is Rex Hudler, the ninth place hitter in the order. I mean, other than the foul popped by Phillips to start the game in which Tino Martinez made a fine play, I mean, there haven't even been any difficult plays behind Johnson. It's all been so easy. Slider for ball one. Hudler and struck out looking his first time. And John, usually you will expect that from an overpowering pitcher like Randy Johnson to go through the lineup once or something overpowering, but not to go through the lineup two or three times. And that's what he's doing. He swung. One ball, one strike. Mark Langston, meanwhile, has given up just one run in five innings. He's kept his team in the game. But so far, Randy Johnson, just a handful of pitchers through the years are the kind of go out there every day and you say maybe there'll be a no hitter. Johnson, Nolan Ryan, Sandy Koufax, Bob Feller. First time you go up there and he blows you away, you say, well, "Okay, I, I've got him now. I know how hard he's throwing." Next time you go up there, you say, "Well, I should be better." He blows you away again. Now it starts to play on your mind. Off the hands and through base hit. Rex Hudler, who gave him a, a great battle before succumbing in the third, this time gets the hit, a single off the hands, and yet another reason for the fans to salute Randy Johnson. Well, John, he was pitching a little differently this inning than the past anyway. He was going inside on the right-handers more. He jammed a couple of them. He even jams Hutler here. See, now this pitch is inside. He has been working everybody away, and he hits this off the handle. He doesn't hit it that well, but he finds the hole. You can see that Dan Wilson was set up inside. He was not pitching like that earlier, but again, he is making adjustments and changing his pattern as the game goes along. So I think he felt like maybe I have him set up because I pitched everybody away, I can go inside now. And he has done that this inning. And Hudler was in there because he's had success in the past against Johnson. Becomes the first base runner for the Angels as well as getting the first hit. Slider for ball one to Tony Phillips. He has fouled to the first baseman. And flight out deep to left center. Remember on a 2 0 pitch in the fourth, he hit one pretty well, although it was a routine play for Griffey. Back near the wall, though, in deep left center. Phillips is a leadoff man, but he's got 26 home runs. Time taken. Rex Hudler, by the way, we mentioned he's hit well against Johnson. Now with that single, he is six for 14. Lifetime against Johnson. He should be hitting cleanup. <laughs> In today's ball game, it's yeah. best. Well, let, let's see if he continues to pitch the right-handers inside. I, I think that's a dangerous thing to do this late in the ball game, but we'll see if that's what he wants to do. Butler has pretty good speed too. He's not a base stealer like a, a Coleman, but he is a guy. If you don't keep a close eye on him, he's well capable of stealing. He has 12 steals this year and has not been caught. And he's doing some homework over there at first base again. The football game here yesterday, a lot of that dirt is loose over at first base, and it's bothering a lot of the base runners. The few that have been over there. For the fences there. Well, they gave it his best shot. Well, that's a good pitch, a high fastball out of the strike zone. And that's what he throws Tony Phillips there, and he gets Tony to chase it. Sixth inning, Mariners one, Angels nothing. But the Angels have finally gotten a man on base with two down here in the sixth after Johnson had retired 17 in a row. Sarcina on deck. He would be next. He got him picked off. Martinez had a hard time getting out of his glove. He's safe at second. Another mistake for the Mariners. And you mentioned it was smart on the part of Johnson to think that maybe he might be going here and pick him off because he has not 
had too many base runners already had to pay any attention to. And he's got him, but Tino just could not get the ball out of his glove, and Hutler hustling all the way. Tagged on top, and he points at the umpire, says, good call. Even though the ball beats me, good call. Now watch right here. He can't get it out right there. Taz a double clutch a couple of times, and it's still a close play at second. That is a stolen base for Hutler. Now base hit gets tied. And the slider misses to Phillips. So that's just a huge play. Very huge. We've seen all day the Angels getting out of trouble with some fine defense. Three double plays turned. They caught Coleman trying to steal. And now the first time the Angels get a base runner, the Mariners make a mistake. The tying run, possibly in scoring position. Struck him out. And that's 10 for the big unit. The big guns are coming up. And Johnson doing some cheerleading. Griffey, Martinez, and Buda coming up. One to nothing, Seattle. We're going to send you now to the studio for Bob Lee and this update. And now the big guns are coming up before the game. Marcel Latchman, the California manager said that if he could get six strong innings out of Langston, he would be very pleased. Well, Langston's given him five strong innings, trailing one nothing, but he's got a real difficult task here in the six. The big sluggers are up: Griffey, then Edgar Martinez, and then Jay Buhner. Griffey has walked and he has lined softly to the second baseman. That's J.T. Snow, fair ball, and Griffey is retired, one away. Langston, by the way, going back to that note of being happy with six innings, Langston has only thrown 72 pitches. So he might well be able to go much longer than six innings. But I don't think either manager anticipated that their starters were going to be able to, you know, pitch this well. I'm sure maybe Lou, Lou did, but Latman has to be happy with what he's gotten from Langston. But this is just, I mean, this is a great ball game, John. This is the way that you'd like to see a playoff game play. Well paced, guys throwing strikes, plays being made. Edgar Martinez, a strike. On one, the count. 1951, October the 3rd, 44 years ago tomorrow, when Bobby Thompson did his famous homer. It was a tight, tense one. Edgar, who's had two singles, lifts one foul. And back out of play. Two great pitchers started that day at the Polo Grounds: Sal Magley for the Giants and Don Newcomb for the Dodgers. And Newcomb took the lead into the ninth inning. Yeah, but then the Giants got it going and won the game on Thompson's three-run homer and won the pennant. As Russ Hodges shouted over and over again. Well, with both of us growing up in the Bay Area, we're familiar with that. We remember that one. Sided low, one ball and two strikes. When Russ Hodges moved with the Giants to San Francisco every year between games of a doubleheader in the summer, he'd play the famous tape yes. of Bobby Thompson's home run with himself at the microphone, and we always love to hear it. You know, here in Seattle, a lot of folks will want a tape of Dave Niehaus's broadcast if they win this one today. Although times have changed, Bobby Thompson's homer sent the Giants into the World Series. This will merely, whoever wins this game will merely go into the division playoffs, which is going to happen, going to unfold for the first time ever in baseball beginning tomorrow night. The winner of this will play at Yankee Stadium. Edgar drives one deep and foul. Very deep down the right field line. Bucky Dent. That name ring a <laughs> ring a bell? The three run homer Lou Pinello remembers it because he was Bucky's teammate in 1978 at Fenway Park and some fans are already making their travel plans for tomorrow and that's what they hope here in Seattle the folks in Southern California are hoping something much different the 
Did he swing? Yes, yeah, strike three. A low slider. Two down. Fans be sure and tune to ESPN2 for college football this Saturday. First and one Eastern. We'll have Big Ten action as Indiana takes on Illinois, led by pass rushing phenom Simeon Rice. And at four, Grambling's Eddie Robinson goes for his 400th win against Mississippi Valley State. That's all on ESPN2 this Saturday. Your place for 45 college football games this fall, as well as 80 NHL games and 170 college basketball games. ESPN2. Ball one to Jay Buhner, and he's been very quiet so far in this one. He's grounded out the third, and he has struck out. He's batted with men on base each time. Two down, nobody on. One to nothing, Seattle. And the breaking ball for a strike. Even though the season uh, was shortened because of the strike, Jay Buhner holds the all-time Mariners record for RBIs, 121 this year. Edmonds and Mark Langston has his best inning his easiest inning of the game against the big sluggers De Sarcina Edmonds and Sammons coming up we head into the late innings now at the Kingdom in Seattle this is John Miller along with Joe Morgan with Chris Berman and Dave Campbell the Kingdom in Seattle and the Mariners are leading one to nothing over the Angels and there's ball one to Gary De Sarcina. De Sarcina hitting second in the order is grounded out twice. He is the only angel who has not yet struck out today against Johnson. He has 10 strikeouts all told as Randy. Fastball in there, one ball and one strike. Johnson has thrown 80 pitches in the game, so that pitching deep into this one should be no problem for him in terms of strength. And remember, he's 3 0 when working on three days rest this year. Right to third, Blowers, who is shallow. 1 0. The only run of the game was driven in by Vince Coleman. Coleman who led off the game with an infield single. But then later he got caught trying to steal. And then in the fifth inning he was able to get the big hit. Both sides here today. The Mariners have had a problem losing their base runners. Coleman, they've hit into three double plays. They've had chances to get a lot more than the one run they do have. Jim Edmonds, the hit of the dangerous slugger with 33 homers. The count is 2 0 to him. Still, Randy Johnson has never gone to three balls on any hitter. That's a foul. And you saw that last graphic there in the first five innings of this game. The Mariners put nine men on base and got only one home. The Angels, of course, have only put one man on all through the game. Johnson with ten strikeouts, no walks. Two and one to the dangerous Edmonds. Oh. Almost not fair. That is not fair, John. That is not fair. I mean, this is a fastball. It looks like it's going to be out over the plate. Look at it. It just starts to run in on him. It explodes and just jumps in. Two and two. The slider misses, and for the first time, Randy Johnson is one pitch away from a walk. Johnson this year has had 292 strikeouts and only 64 walks. Hanging tough. If you make any kind of a mistake to this guy, he can hurt you. And remember, at the Kingdom, right field. Look at that big wall in right field. That is a home run hitter's paradise. It's the reverse image of Fenway Park in Boston. It's very shallow. Shirley Davis. And again, Edmonds hangs tough in there. Just a matter of. Survival for the Angel hitters right now. <laughs> Three and two the count. Anytime they do anything but strike out, it's it's a positive sign for them, which is a great sign for Randy Johnson. He has just been, to say the least, he's been overpowered. Three and two. Tim Salmon is on deck. Top line. 
Could be trouble. Griffey in a hurry. He's there. No trouble at all. John, I want to make a statement that's not going to be popular with the Seattle fans, but that base hit by Hutler may be a blessing in disguise for the Mariners because it takes the pressure off of off of the Mariners in that it takes the pressure off of the defense. It takes the pressure off of the manager. It puts the onus on the only thing that should be important and that is winning the ball game. So I think that there may be a blessing in the skies that base hit. Here's Tim Salmon. It's a point well taken. Salmon takes the strike. Well, if you're pitching a no-hitter, your manager's worried about taking you out. Your fielders are worried about making a mistake. Nobody wants the ball. No one wants the ball. So you get the base hit out of the way. The only things on their mind now is winning the ball game. Look at that. Oh, and two to Salmon. He has struck out looking twice already. Salmon, a 332 hitter, has been made to look like a rookie in this one by Randy Johnson. Two down and nobody out. An hour and the jug's gun there. One and two. Chili Davis would be next. That adds up to ten. Ten strikeouts. Two and two. Starting to run out of time. One to nothing, Seattle. Here's Mike Blowers, last of the seventh inning. And there's a strike on the outside on a performance by Mark Langston. Yes. He's been hurting. He couldn't make the start here last Wednesday because he was hurting. He pitched Thursday instead of pitched a beauty, and they had to beat Oakland and did. And he's come back on three days rest to today. Uh, with everything going against him, against a great hitting club, and he's kept his club right there. Randy Johnson could not have been better today, and yet Langston has kept his club in position to come back and win this game. And this one is not over. I know the big unit is blowing them away, but the Angels still have six outs. They could, the Mariners could use another run. <laughs> well, keep in mind, the Angels are the second highest scoring team in the majors. 800 runs this year. And that's including the slump they went into. Mark Langston has only thrown 84 pitches in this game. Flowers has walked and hit into a double play. Two and two to count. On deck, Tino Martinez, the left handed batting slugger, and then Dan Wilson. I mean, these are two of the highest scoring teams in the majors. Two of the others are the Red Sox and the Indians. But look what we've got, a one-nothing game. Quite a tribute to Langston and Randy Johnson. Rising to the occasion. Slider misses. Of course, Langston over the years has always been around the seventh or eighth inning when the rap on him has been that he starts right. looking in the dugout. Well, they say if you stay close to him, you could beat him. The Angels do have those two big, strong relievers. Troy Percival, the rookie, and Lee Smith, the all time saves leader. Base hit! <laughs> Phillips disconsolate. He made a dive for it and did not get to it. I think Phillips was upset because he was playing a little closer to the line this late in the ballgame and didn't want to give up a double. See how close he is to the line. He figures if he's playing where he was earlier in the ballgame, he may have come up with it. I'm not so sure he could have. He missed that by a good foot or so. Tony Phillips made a, a great play in the fifth inning to start a double play, but you see he's upset. And I think it's because of his positioning more than the fact that he didn't catch the ball. I don't know if they moved him over or he moved over himself. Here's Tino Martinez. Nobody out. And uh, Blowers is back again. Blowers is not a, a base dealer, only two steals. Well, the question is do you bunt him over? 
with Martinez. My answer would be yes, but I'm not the manager. Well, Lou's answer is yes, but there's Langston again. He battles the ball. No play anyway. They're all safe. In his haste to get Blowers, he got no one. Well, he bounces off because he wants to go to second base. Again, this ball is not bunted where it should be. It should be bunted down the first baseline. He gets there quickly. He looks up a little too quick. But he, you see, he didn't throw to first base because Hudler was not looking at him. Hudler was looking at second base because he thought they were going to go to second for one and back to first for a double play. But Hudler was not looking at Langston. So smart play there by Langston not to throw the ball to first base. Boy, that was a bizarre sight. Rex Hudler with his back to the pitcher. Well, he thought the throw was going to be coming from second base and he was going to stretch out and act like a first baseman. He did not know that Langston had bobbled the ball. In other words, he was getting ready to complete a double play. Right. Well, that's a lot of confidence in the fielding ability of Mark Langston by Rex Hudler. Bobby Cuellar, the pitching coach, is out there, and Langston's in a lot of trouble now. All right, now take a look here. Now watch. You see Hudler in your background. He's running to first base. Now watch him. You see Langston bobbling. Now look at Hudler. You can see him at the right of your screen here. Now look at him. He's not looking at Langston. Langston was ready to throw. They still could have gotten the runner at first base had he been watching. By the way, Chuck Hernandez is the pitching coach for the Angels. I called him Bobby Cuellar a couple of times. Bobby Cuellar is the pitching coach for the Mariners. Here is Dan Wilson. He yeah. failed in a punt attempt back in the fifth with the, a good play by Langston. It, it turned into a force play. And again, I think this is another smart play. Hey, let's get one more run here. One more run. I think Lou Pinella would feel you know, a little more secure than he does at this point. The Seattle uh, Mariners are ahead one to nothing. They're threatening to go further ahead. The Angels bullpen is very busy. They bunted at it and missed. And one ball, one strike. Remember, you want to bunt this ball to the third baseman. You want to force the first the third baseman to field it. Mike James, the right-hander, Bob Patterson, the left-hander. He's been in a lot of postseason games. Patterson went in his days with the Pirates. Marcel Latchman and Chuck Hernandez. There's Blowers at second. Tino Martinez at first. He gets credit for a sacrifice. And uh, no error will be charged for that play. At first they had said error on Langston. Then they changed it to a fielder's choice. And I think when they saw right, what we saw, yeah. Yeah, that was smart because that was not Langston's error. He still had time to get the runner at first base. But Hudler was thinking the throw was coming from second. He had his back to him. Actually, a very good play by Langston not to throw the ball. Two and one. That is away from the catcher Adamson. It was not a foul. And the runners have to hold on. I thought maybe Blowers would take off, but he's not a very fast man. So the Angels got a break, I think, on that one. Well, they definitely get a break here. The ball goes off the glove of Allison and he has to chase it. I mean there's no way he can get to that ball get up and make a throw to third base. But again Blowers just didn't think he could make it. So he took the conservative move. It's a very big play. They wouldn't have had to bunt any longer if they'd moved up. This will get it done. Maybe more so. Oh no. Out at first. Oh man. Tony Phillips with a huge play. But the runners have been moved up. Lowers to third, Tino to second. You will not see a better play than that. I don't care how long you watch. I mean, Tony Phillips has played his heart out there at third base tonight. I mean, this is amazing play right here. He waited back because it looked like Langston. See, he doesn't want to charge too quickly because it looks like Langston might get it. Now he has to come get it. He has to avoid Langston, barehanded, throws it while he's falling down. I mean that you don't get, it doesn't get any better than that. Look at this play. Now, I mean Langston's in his way. He avoids Langston, throws while he's prone, and throws a strike. Well, now we all know why Sparky Anderson loved Tony Phillips so much in Detroit 
for those many years and when they love him in Anaheim. Cora, the infield is in. And perhaps the game itself is on the line right now. That was the game right there, in my opinion, John. I mean, if if the if they may, if they load the bases with no one out, you're in serious trouble. I mean, at least now he has some margin for error. If he happens to get behind the count, he doesn't have to give in. He has first base open. You can pitch tough. You can go for the strikeout right here. Second and third, one out, the infield in. Slider misses low. And ever so important now if Allenson's going to call for the slider, he's got to be able to block it if it's in the dirt. Flowers at third, Tino Martinez at second. The Mariners have now put 11 men on base, and still they have only scored one. And the question is if the runner at third is going to go on contact. You mentioned Flowers not fast, but you put pressure on the defense if you go on contact. And that's a call from uh, Lou Pinella. Foul right behind Flowers down the left field line. One and two now to Cora. Cora, a 297 hitter, who just seems to have an act for putting the ball in play. Ordinarily, he's a number two man in the order for the Mariners, right behind the leadoff man. He's hitting ninth, just in front of leadoff man Vince Coleman. Today, Coleman is on deck. Because he had some margin for error. He was going for the strikeout. So he's trying to throw a fastball up and in, and it gets away from him. Actually, Cora didn't move too well either. But that's the margin for error he had because of the great play by Tony Phillips. So that margin of error has disappeared. And here is Vince Coleman, who has driven in the only run of the game, who is two for three against Langston. And so maybe the trip to Yankee Stadium will be decided right here. The infield remains in. Ball one. Three men on, one man out. Flowers who singled at third base. And this is Tino Martinez at second and Joey Cora at first. Well, this is interesting that he's staying with Langston through all of this because he doesn't want Coleman to hit from the left side. I think he wants him to hit from the right side. A little quicker to first hitting from the left side. Very high. And now Langston is running out of room with which to maneuver. It is 2 and 0. Oh. Tough decision here for Lou Pinella. Do you make him take one so that he doesn't chase one out of the strike zone, or do you turn him loose? I say you turn him loose. I think that's the way Lou wants to do it. He's, he's aggressive. Good pitch by Langston. Yeah, but that's the price you pay. See, that was a tough pitch. If you're not swinging, that's probably ball three, or it's a borderline pitch anyway. Coleman hit a grand slam just to, what, 10 days ago against Oakland against Todd Van Poppel. And it came on his 34th birthday. Two and one the count. Langston trying to keep his team alive for the Western Division title. Now it is two and two. Langston has had a good comeback here against Coleman. I asked Coleman before the game. I said, Vince, how are you, man? I mean, are you hurting? Anything bothering you? He says, No, no, I feel fantastic. I'm too young to have any problems. Played like a young guy since coming here to Seattle, that's for sure. Two and two. Three men on, one man out. The Mariners lead one to nothing. Well, he had to go out and get it. Another tough pitch from Langston. It remains two and two. And I tell you what, Langston's showing a lot of heart here. He's reaching back, getting a little extra here with Vince Coleman. There again, you saw the runners. Flowers at third, Tino Martinez at second, Cora at first. The infield in, the outfield is backed up and straight away. The left field is very deep, even though Coleman's not a guy you associate with home runs. Garrett Anderson very deep in the left. Ooh, just missing inside of Langston. Wanted that call. 
Well, he wanted that pitch. I'm not so sure he thought it was a strike, but he wanted that pitch, John. That's the one he figured he could put him away with, the fastball in, because he had just thrown a pitch away where Coleman had to reach out and foul it. That was his strikeout pitch. 52,356 on their feet. A critical pitch in this game right now. And foul back and out of play. The duel continues. The fans themselves may need some oxygen here. <laughs> the tension goes much longer. I may need some too, John. This is exciting. 23 pitches in this inning for Langston. It's in the right. Salmon, it's caught. The throw home, and Blowers does not even attempt it. And Vince Coleman, in his frustration, throws the bat the batting helmet down at first base. Mike Blowers. He has shown himself to be one of the most timid base runners you'll ever see. Salmon was on the ground. Well, I mean, it's just a mistake. And the Mariners have made more mistakes in this ball game than the Angels have. And that's why it's still close. And you see Coleman very upset because he knows what this one more run means. It's a sliding catch by Salmon. And you're right. I mean, he's on the ground. He can't get up. Now, here's Blowers. You have to go back and tag up. Tag up. That's what you're supposed to do. He tags up too late, and then he would have been out. He Coleman looks back. Yeah. Coleman said, he didn't score. Are you kidding me? Now the broken bat. It's fair. Flowers has scored. Tino Martinez has scored. And they all have scored. And here comes Soho. Out there as Latchman came out, he walked away from him halfway to shortstop. He just pitched a heck of a game, and to have it all come undone on that play is just astounding. Well, JT Snow, one of the best fielding first basemen, I can't believe he didn't get that ball, Joe. No, it looked like he was going to get it, but a lot of times when the bat breaks, John, you're distracted for a moment. You see the barrel go one way, and the ball is going another. And I'm speaking from experience as an infielder. You see this object coming, you're not sure which is the ball for a split second, and then you go after it. But I think he steamed it more than that. Remember, there was two things that happened this inning. Cutler with his back to him, that could have been another out already in this inning. And the point is right there, to be beaten by a broken bat, ground ball, he is very upset. And I'm again, I, I'm not defending anyone, but you do get distracted when that bat breaks. But I tell you what, also, he took the relay throw himself. Cut it off with Soho heading home, and then he turned around and let his frustration show even in making the play. I mean, he threw a 90 mile an hour fastball at his catcher from 40 feet away, and it shot right past him, enabling Soho to score the fourth run of the play. It is five to nothing, Mariners. Langston is finished, and Bob Patterson has come on. Luis Soho, of all people, gets the big hit. Now, watch the bat is broken. Now, the ball, the bat goes and he's even looking at the bat and I'm sure that distracted snow at first base now here's what you're talking about with Langston I mean he couldn't get out of his glove John but by the time he does he just turns it loose now he, he does cover home plate he never quit on the play and he's covering home plate right there and there's the tag I mean you see he is there I tell you what if anybody questions the heart of Mark of Langston anymore 
they need to look at this game tonight. This guy has pitched a heck of a game. He's pissed his heart out and he's played his heart out. So he's shown a lot tonight as far as I'm concerned. And for the Mariners Luis Soho. On a team with Griffey and Edgar Martinez and Buner. Tino Martinez Blowers. So many sluggers. And Luis Soho is the man who gets the big hit. It's scored as a three run double for Soho. And then he scores on the error charge to Langston. A double and not a triple for Soho. He takes third on the throw to the plate and it scores on the error by Langston. Luis Soho. The name doesn't sound a lot like Bucky Dent. <laughs> but they may be saying Soho's name in Anaheim the way they say Dent's name in Boston for years to come. Rep Bucky bleeping Dent. <laughs> Luis bleeping Soho. <laughs> are you kidding me? Reputations are made in the pressure pack games. Well, Bucky was a superstar from that point onward, wasn't he? Ken Griffey, the hitter against Bob Patterson, one ball and one strike. Patterson was there with the Pirates in their great days with Bonilla and Bonds and Van Slyke and Bell and the Jim Lee. But look at Mark Langston. Everything came undone. I mean, he got the big out and he got a break. Right. He got Coleman with a great catch out there by Salmon in the clutch. Blowers made a, a bonehead play and did not score. And then a, just a moment later, they all scored. But again, Coleman should have been the third out anyway. Because of the, the failure to get anybody out of that punt by Chino Martinez. And you, the face of Langston tells you a lot about the professional athlete. A lot of people say they only care about money. That's not what he's thinking about. He don't, you know, professional athletes think about winning and losing, and it hurts them to win when they lose. Griffey is down, and so are the Mariners. Luis Soho has broken the backs of the California Angels. Luis Soho has perhaps sent the Mariners to Yankee Stadium. Five to nothing, Seattle, as we go to the eighth. Randy Johnson now with a five run lead and his uh, masterpiece going. Now let's go to our colleague, Dave Campbell. Thank you John I think back to the 1968 World Series game one Bob Gibson struck out 17 fastball and slider it's no wonder Sports Illustrated called Randy Johnson the Stephen King of pitchers John and Joe indeed now Randy Johnson who had the Mariners not had to play this game he would have been doing his thing in the mounted Yankee Stadium tomorrow night against David Cohn and of course the Yankees the ones who are the really the big beneficiaries of the mere right. fact that this game is being played. You're right. You know, John, some people will gain stature. Randy Johnson will gain stature as a big game pitcher by winning this ball game today. But I think Mark Langston gained stature from his effort today. And even though he's going to probably lose this ball game, I don't think there's anyone that does not have a better feel for Mark Langston than ever before. And this is what his teammates think about him. Here's Edmondson. Look at that. He's coming in. This is between innings here. Jim That's Edmonds, important. Jim Edmonds came over to him between innings. He's gained a lot of respect from his teammates and I think people around the country today. Chili Davis. High and deep and fouled on the left field line. I mean, very deep. Rex Hudler, that would be the play that will kind of linger if you're an Angels fan. I mean, seeing his back to Mark Langston of the bunt. But again, Langston, in his haste to get the lead runner, booted the ball and then forced himself to have to go to first. Langston and Hudler. Strike to Chili Davis. He has popped the second and struck out. Well, 
Saints could do again has displayed that competitiveness here today. The performance has shown a lot, a lot of heart, and he's he looks like an angry Hart well, Langston right now. I don't think there's any doubt that he's upset because of what has happened. I mean, for what was shaping up as a great game, they all come undone. Exactly. Three and one. Mariners now the big lead, and for Randy Johnson, he wants to pop the champagne corks, but he's got six outs to get yet. And that's the point. This game is not over until until Randy Johnson or the Mariners can finish it. It's only the second time that Johnson has gone to a three-ball count. It is now three and two. To Chili Davis. Johnson has 11 strikeouts in this game. And there's the first walk. Perhaps not so coincidentally, after Johnson was given the big lead, he issues his first walk. Here to start the eighth inning. The batter will be J.T. Snow. Langston back in the dugout with uh, Tony Phillips. Meanwhile, the Seattle bullpen is beginning to, to get busy. The closer, the ace, the man that Lupinella seems to know the secret of, and that's Norm Charlton. Well, he said he wanted seven of Randy Johnson and two of Norm Charlton, but he's going a little farther with Randy, and that's understandable. Flowers! They get one. This is another fine play. We've seen a lot of good plays in this ball game. You see a dive by, by Blowers. He knocks it down, picks it up, and makes sure of one. That's the key, and that's what Cora does. He doesn't try to turn it too quickly and drop the ball. He makes sure of one. Now they're going to pinch hit as you see Charlton warming up in the bullpen. And Marcel Latchman goes to his bench for the veteran right handed hitter, Dave Gallagher, to pinch hit for Garrett Anderson. And I don't know that Anderson has been lifted for a pinch hitter before, but such has been the dominance of Randy Johnson in this ball game. Well, I think if you're Marcel Latchman, you're running out of time. You've got to try to do something with your normal lineup. It hasn't worked yet, so you're going to try to give someone else a chance to give you a spark here. a line drive to right field but Buner was right there they had him played perfectly and he makes the catch and he fires to first base and JT Snow gets back Rene Gonzalez the pinch hitter for Andy Allenson Allenson went over two so now Gonzalez will give it a shot and he is seven for 15 plus he's had five walks in his career against Randy Johnson. Rene Gonzalez backup infielder at one time he had the most backup infield job of all he was the backup shortstop to Cal Ripken. <laughs> Not a whole lot of work. Not a lot of work. He swung at it. Played up by a shoe lock made the call himself. Uh, even as the catcher Wilson was appealing to Evans at first. Oh and one the count to Gonzalez. He's hitting 294. You see he's done well against Johnson. They just need to get some people on base. Down the left field line. Fair ball and over the wall. An automatic double. The left field umpire Mark Johnson was there to make the call. We've got six umpires working again. That is only the second hit for the Angels and Rene Gonzalez continues to do what almost nobody else is able to. 
and that's hit Randy Johnson. Well, the two pinch hitters have come in and hit the ball hard. So you see Lou Pinella coming out. He said he wanted seven. He's gotten seven and two thirds so far. And remember, I mean, five runs in this ballpark is not too many for the Angels to manufacture. Also remember, but he's going to stick with Johnson. I mean, with a five-run lead. He's got Johnson penciled in for game three of the divisional series right here in this ballpark against the Yankees. That series will open tomorrow. David Cohn, 18 and 8, will go against either Basio of the Mariners or if the Angels can make that comeback, Abbott would go. Here is Rex Hudler, who has also done well against Johnson. Six for 14. Base hit could mean two runs. The slider misses. Hudler. We got the first hit that was back in the sixth inning. He and uh, Mark Langston seem to have some strained relations there in the bench after the big seventh inning outburst. Did he swing? Yes. Actually, I think he just called it a strike. One ball, one strike. Boston at Cleveland would open tomorrow. Clemens and Dennis Martinez. As you see the runners. Snow at third, Gonzalez at second. Two down. This is the first scoring opportunity the Angels have had. That's a foul down the right field line. One ball and two strikes now. The National League, Greg Maddox at Colorado against Kevin Ritz. Cincinnati at Los Angeles. Pete Shorek, an 18 game winner against Ramon Martinez. Four playoff series beginning tomorrow. And the Angels and Mark Langston and company were hoping to be one of those teams. And Rex Hudler right now is just trying to get them back into this game. Second and third, two down. And he just got a piece of that slider. And Hunter just hangs in there against Johnson, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Well, that's one of the reasons he's in the ball game. I think if Randy can get out of this jam, you may see Charlton in the ninth. There's Charlton. He's ready in the bullpen. If needed. The shortstop. That's Luis Soho. We're going to the last of the eighth. Edgar Martinez coming up. The Mariners are three outs away from postseason play. Randy Johnson, he's pitched eight shutout innings in the biggest game of his life. He's allowed only two hits. He's had 11 strikeouts, although he got into some trouble in the eighth inning for the first time. And also, it's the only inning of the game in which he did not register a strikeout. But it appears, John, that maybe he is going to stay in there for the ninth inning. Charleston's no longer throwing. Well, here's Mike James on in relief for the Angels. He's uh, done a very good job as a right hander out of the California bullpen. Other changes for California. A new catcher, George Fabregas, who hit eighth in the order. And Dave Gallagher stays in the game to play left field after pitch hitting for Garrett Anderson. Five to nothing. The Mariners lead the Angels as we go to the last of the eighth inning. The Angels, who led the Mariners by 13 games on August the 2nd. Ball one to Edgar Martinez. Edgar has lifted his season's average to 356 by going two for three today. We already know that he's going to be the batting champion. Nobody is anywhere close to it. No. The fans start to chant MVP. With Edgar up there. And you made a great point earlier showing his numbers and the things that he's done. I mean, he's got some fantastic numbers, but being perfectly honest with you, so do a lot of players in the American League this year and the National League. This you know, has been a banner year for players' performances. I asked Cecil Fielder about MVP in the American League. We talked about Edgar, about Albert Bell, about Mo Vaughn. And, and uh, Cecil Fielder said, if, if it's my vote, I got to name all three of them co MVPs. I can't say one of them was more valuable than another. They all had incredible years for good clubs. I said that to Ken Griffey Jr. today. I said this may be a year where you 
co MVPs, people would be happy and would, no one would be slighted. But obviously, that, that's very difficult. They've had that before. Willie Stargell and Keith Hernandez were co MVPs. Mike Cuellar and uh, Dennis uh, McLean, Den Denny McLean yeah, yeah. were co 69. Cy Young Award winners. So they, it's, they have had co winners before. Ball four to Edgar Martinez. Right after the game, yeah. stay tuned. Sports Center will be coming up. They have reached a verdict in the O.J. Simpson trial, which won't be announced until tomorrow. A preview of the Monday night football game, and then one of the post-game celebrating from the King Dog. You'll be able to see that on Sports Center right after the game. The ninth playoff to determine a champion, a league champion, or a division champion in Major League history is unfolding here at the King Dome. And the Mariners have a five to nothing lead. Jay Buhner has lifted one foul. Now Mark Langston against Ken Griffey. Griffey hitless. Nice. Edgar Martinez two singles that didn't figure in the scoring. Jay Buhner 0 for 3. Mike Blowers had one single and grinded into a double play. Tino Martinez a walk a foul out and a bunt that turned into maybe the key play of the game. But it was Luis Soho and Vince Coleman. We got the big hits tonight for the Seattle Mariners. Vince. Not the big guys that you would expect. And that, you know what that that's what makes these such great games and if you think about most of the playoffs in the past the big name guys weren't the ones that hit it. You know you mentioned the Bucky Dent. It wasn't your Stremski. But you know and when you think about this game you think about the game that I played in in 1980 with the Dodgers it wasn't the guys who were favored for MVP that did all the damage. So. This is what baseball is all about. Anyone can rise to the occasion because they're all professionals. And as it has turned out so far in this one, it's also been the difference in this one. But the big guy there has risen to the occasion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but the big guns on both sides have been shut down. Right. But well, he's the reason the Angels were shut down. Yeah. Right. Luis Soho and Vince Coleman came through big on the big stage. The Mariners who came into being in 1977 as an expansion team and they have long suffered in the comparison with their fellow expansion team from that year the Toronto Blue Jays. Blue Jays have won the last two World Series and have been a perennial contender all through most of the 80s and 90s while the Mariners have always been a team at the bottom. They were always talking about well, they finally played better than 500 one year and now on the Lou Piniella they became a contender and now they've made this dramatic comeback against the Angels in the American League West and then three outs away from heading into postseason play for the first time in their history. Speaking of a big stage Yankee Stadium that's a pretty big one. Look at that pickup by Tony Phillips. Oh man. He's played like Superman. Yes, down there today. But he could not get that one out of his glove. He actually wanted it. He had a chance to make a play, but he couldn't get out of his glove. You know, as you see, there's a lot of room down there. And on AstroTurf, this ball gets down there so quickly. That's a dive and stop. See, right here, he wants to make a play. He's trying to find the ball, but it stuck in his web. He could not get it out. But a great effort there again by Tony Phillips. Well, at least by stopping the ball, he kept uh, Buner from getting a double. They would have had runners at second and third. Maybe they would have had a runner at second and a run home if he doesn't get to that ball. And an acrobatic play by Phillips. Here's Mike Blowers. He has walked, grounded into a double play, and his single started the, the fateful seventh inning round. The throw down to second base by Fabregas, the new catcher, but Edgar is back in. Open activity for the Angels. The right hander is John Habian. And the left hander is Mark Holzimer. It is five to nothing for the Mariners in the last of the eighth inning. 52,356. Now they're just waiting for that final joyous celebration. They're actually saying, hey, let's get three outs here so we can get three outs with the Angels, but you better try to get some more if you can. There's Eduardo Perez closest to us. That's Tony Perez's son. It's interesting. Uh, you know, the Yankees' problems this year were when they came west. Here, Anaheim, Oakland, they couldn't beat any of those teams on the road. And the Yankees will need to come up big the first two games at Yankee Stadium. 
before they come back here and have to face Randy Johnson if that's the way it turns out. James can't get it. Everybody is safe. The big slugging Seattle Mariners with all of those home run hitters. It's been a couple of months <laughs> that have turned the tables in this one. You're right. Yeah. Out comes Latchman. Well, it's a good bunt in that his bunt is sharply down the third baseline, but you can see he did not get a good jump on it. He actually started toward first base. No chance for anyone else to make the play after it went off his hand. So they're going to the left hander now. From the bullpen, Holzemer. Bases loaded, nobody out. The Mariners just about to bust this one wide open. And we'll be right back. Left hander Mark Holzimmer has come in from the California bullpen with the bases loaded and nobody out. And all Marcel Latchman has asked him to do is, hey, just don't let him get any more runs. Right. This is his 12th outing of the year. You see his numbers. He's been kind of wild. That's Edgar at third, Buner at second, and Blowers at first. The infield is in for Tino Martinez. Got a pretty good breaking ball there. Snapped it in for a called strike on one. And anytime you come in to pitch with the bases loaded against the power hitter, that first pitch is very important. If you can get a strike, it gives you some room to work. But if you miss, then you're really in trouble. Way outside. One ball and one strike. Tino Martinez has fouled out. He has walked. And he's had a sacrifice bunt, and that may be the key of the ball game. They ended up getting nobody on the play, fueling the four run seventh inning round. Looks kind of glum for Chili Davis and his Angels. Base hit. One run scores in the play. Edgar Martinez, Buehler stopping at third. It is six to nothing and counting. The final score in this one will look a lot different than the most of the game was played. And here comes Marcel Latchman again. He just wanted Holzimer to get Tino Martinez out. He did not. Now John Habian will be summoned for the bullpen with the right-handed batting Wilson coming up. Base is loaded. A run is in. And the Mariner party is just starting here in Seattle. We'll be right back. Six to nothing Mariners. Bases loaded. Nobody out. And John Habian facing Dan Wilson who hits one foul down the left field line and not fouled by much. John Habian in his fifth game of the or he is the fifth pitcher of the game for the Angels. When we started this ball game we felt like both teams would go with their starters longer. We didn't know it was going to be one to nothing. But this is the reason you do not like to get into your bullpen in a game like this. That's a base hit to left center field. Start counting them. Buner. Now Blowers. A double for Wilson. Stopping at third, Martinez. It is eight to nothing, Seattle. And it's starting to turn into a massacre now. Well, again, when you get into the bullpen and the guys have to come in and make pitches and they're not capable of making them on the spot, you give up a lot of runs. And that's what happens here as that ball is in the gap. And all the runners score. And Wilson goes to second base. Two more runs across for the Mariners. Runners at second and third. Nobody out. Joey Cora, the hitter, they're pulled in on the infield. Halfway at short in second, but on the turf that's tantamount to being pulled in all the way. Cora. Hit by a pitch, and it was also a, a big play in that yes. seventh inning rally because Langston had two strikes on him and then hit him. That loaded the bases. And that's a ball. Two and oh. Marcel Latchman, for him, he may well play in his mind that seventh inning and what might have been. Right. However, he could play that for August and September in what might have been. The Angels had an 11 game lead in the division. They once led the Mariners by 13. Bullpen area where the Angels have more activity going. 
we can look at the seventh inning of course and that was the one that broke it open but really what is beating the California Angels has been Randy Johnson's pitching. I mean the one run in the fifth inning may have been enough. Obviously this makes it much easier for Randy but. I mean he has just been he may not, he's not yielded. Right. And there was I mean the one run may have been enough. Three and one the count to Cora. Vince Coleman is on deck. That the reliever you saw warming up in the Angels bullpen by the way. Was Brian Anderson. The runners, Tino Martinez at third, and there's Dan Wilson at second, who just got a two RBI double. Along the left field line. A long run for Gallagher and foul ground. But that will uh, allow a run to score. At the second is Phillips in time. He got Wilson. Tony Phillips has got to uh, be very proud of the way he's played. He's he just played his heart out here today. You're right. I mean, he's played well. Give Cora a sacrifice fly on the foul fly to left field. And sacrifice fly into a double play. You're right. Salmon goes over. He makes the catch. Now he throws towards the plate. He actually throws the third base. Phillips cuts it off. Fires back to second base. And there you see Wilson. Dave Gallagher starting that play. Right. It's a fourth double play turned by the not really turned in that case. The fourth double play picked up by the Angels in this game. So two down and nobody on as Vince Coleman takes a strike from John Habian. It is nine to nothing for the Mariners. The Angel Bookman trying to get somebody out of this inning. We've used three different relievers, James, Holzimer, and Habian. And the first five hitters of the inning all reached. The blow it wide open. Randy Johnson. And he'll get more opportunities to show his stuff on the, the big stage in the days upcoming. And he may well be pitching in that game three against the Yankees, what could be the pivotal game of that series. And if the Mariners can hold their own in the first two games at Yankee Stadium. They'll come back one to one. They've got Randy Johnson ready to go in game three. You're right. If they can go there, I mean, a lot of times when you start the series on the road, you want to get a split there and then come home where obviously you, you figure you have to, you can win two out of the three. The Yankees have their own problems because of the, an injury sustained by Jack McDowell. That's a ball. Two and two to Coleman. McDowell pulled a little muscle in his back that is. Uh, Caused a big pain to the Yankees. They've been able to get past it. They're hoping he'll be healthy enough to go in game three, which would be against Randy Johnson. Again, after the first two games, they'll have a day off, which would enable Johnson to go on three days' rest in game three of that series. Coleman strikes out on a ball in the dirt, and the inning is ended. With four more runs for the Mariners. And now, the question is, will Johnson get the shutout? Top of the order coming for the Angels. The Mariners are about to head to New York. Nine to nothing, the Mariners, as we head to the ninth inning. Randy Johnson needing three outs to wrap it up. In the seventh inning, this bunt by Tino Martinez, of all things. Now watch. First Langston bobbles it, but now he gets ready to throw to Hudler. Hudler has his back to him because he thought Langston was going to go to second and it was going to be a throw from second base. And you see Langston drop his hands like, where were you? And this is a ground ball that went past J.T. Snow. This was what broke the game open. And Luis Soho will come all the way around to score as you see the ball getting away. And all four runs scored in the play. And now Randy Johnson. Better disappointment for Mark Langston and his teammates. But it, you know, all of that might, as you pointed out, might not have even mattered because of this man. The way the big unit is pitching, one has been more than enough. Yeah, and the Angels may not have scored in this century the way that he's pitching. And he already had the one before the seventh inning. Tony Phillips, the hitter, quickly, two strikes the count. Johnson has thrown 113 pitches in this game. There's JT Snow. Will be haunted by visions of that ground ball that just got past him. But I think they'll all be haunted by the image of Randy Johnson standing on the mound. I know he will be. Jimmy Davis. Very high. One ball and two 
strikes in. One thing I think to consider about the Angels also, a club that was supposed to finish last this year, nobody thought they'd do anything. But when you look at guys like DeSarcina, Edmund, Salmon, JT Snow, Garrett Anderson, I mean the, the core of this club is very young. Phillips hits a high drive deep into left center. Coleman is back, all the way back. Gone, a home run. And there's the shutout. Tony Phillips. And the way he's played here tonight, I guess it's only fitting that at least he would break up the shutout because he's done just about everything else for the Angels. Just played an inspiring game. You're right. He has been a bulldog in this game, and so you're probably right. It's only fitting that he gets something out of it. But you can see that he's not real happy because he knows that maybe if he would have hit that in the third inning, it would have made a difference. Now Spike Owen is going to pinch hit. Well, there's a looks like a little slider, not the same slider he was throwing throughout the ball game, but Tony Phillips gets enough of it to get it over the left field wall. Spike Owen pinch hitting for Gary D. Sarcina. And I'm wondering if uh, more than anything, Joe, it's just uh, Spike a chance to get his name in the box score of a, of a playoff when playoffs don't happen very often. The last one was 15 years ago. This is over the ninth one. And we're talking about more than 100 years in Major League Baseball. Nine to one the score now. And the Mariner bullpen will get busy again. Two and one to Spike. You know, I mean, they want Randy to come back on three days rest against right. the Yankees, and it's time for them to start thinking about that, I think, Joe. Well, you don't want to let him stand out there and just throw useless pitches, you know, throw another 15 or 20 pitches for no reason. That one has hit well. Griffey, though, plenty of room out there. One gone in the ninth. Day two, right after the game to ESPN for Sports Center. Robin Roberts and Jack Edwards will bring you the complete day in sports, including all of the celebrating that will happen here at the Kingdom when this game has ended. And our thanks also to our, as Eduardo Perez gets ready to bat, our thanks to our ESPN Sunday Night Baseball crew, who the, uh, the great job in 1995 in our coverage. And most of them have gathered here today on short notice coming in from Denver and getting things prepared for this one. Phil Ornans, our producer, Mark Payton, the director, Marty Aronoff, Peter Pascarelli, and the whole crew. And uh, we don't often mention uh, any of them, but, but truly we appreciate them. They do a fabulous job. Eduardo Perez hitting for Jim Edmonds. Jay Buhner, who came on so big at the end when it counted most. On to the count to Perez. He was the third baseman when the season began. But he eventually got sent back. Luis Soho. Johnson knocks it down back to Wilson the catcher Wilson throws over to first and he got it. Another great play. Are you kidding me. <laughs> well the play goes one two three. Well we take a look at this Johnson gets his glove on it. And he actually knocks it back toward the plate. Now look at Wilson. He comes busting out of there, grabs it, fires a strike to first base, and they need one more out. Yeah. Now Tim Salmon. Two down, nobody out. Salmon has struck out three times. And that's a foul. Just one out away from heading to New York. They're a long way from getting to their ultimate goal, even by getting to New York. But here in Seattle, for 19 years, they've had a hard time getting above last place. But you have to take it one step at a time, John, and they're making that first step today. Tomorrow night, David Cohn at Yankee Stadium against Chris Bazio. Two strikes with two down. You'll be watching.
watching you on NBC with Greg Gumbel, Joe. Enjoyed it again in 95. We'll yeah. See you in 96. Thank you. Looking forward to it. This is what baseball should be all about right here. One ball and two strikes. Randy Johnson. One strike away from finishing the 1995 season 18 and 2. Pitching the biggest game of his life, and it's one of his best. The Seattle Mariners are the champions of the American League West. Celebration is well underway at the Kingdom. The Mariners are headed into the postseason. Only time will tell how far they'll go. The mere fact of this game has hurt their chances of beating the Yankees. But they have come from 13 games back. Maybe they are the team of destiny in 1995. Well, I think Randy Johnson makes them the team of destiny. 12 strikeouts today. 12 Ks in getting his 18th win, and then Luis Soho. He got the big hit. The Mariners have won the West despite a, a gutty performance by Mark Langston 